I asked ChatGPT for some stock ETF research to help me make a choice in picking the best stock dividend yielding investments. Okay, wow, I'm familiar with all of these. It's a pretty good choice. Let's just take number three, for example, because I personally invest in the SCHD. I'm here on SeekingAlpha.com. Chad GPT said SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF is a good one. Let's see what it says here. So I'm on the information page for SCHD. According to Seeking Alpha rating summary, bye bye. ETF grades, A minus, A plus, A plus, B plus, A plus, all in the green. SCHD certainly looks like a very good stock ETF. Let's look at the holding breakdown for SCHD and see if ChatGPT got it right. We'll do a little bit more research on SCHD and see what Seeking Alpha says. Let's take a look at the holdings breakdown. They have 21% in financials, 16% in technology, 16% in industrials, 13 in consumer defensive, 10 in healthcare, and the list goes on and on. It's pretty good and pretty diversified. As you look a little bit lower, you'll see their top 10 holdings. Now, this isn't all of their holdings they own, but simply their top 10. Number one, Broadcom Incorporated. Verizon, Texas Instruments, Home Depot, Cisco, BlackRock, Merck, Coca-Cola, Lockheed Martin, Pepsi. 40%. Of their, of their holdings are in those top 10 holdings. Now, when you buy an ETF, what that essentially means is, right now, SCHD is, is around the $76 to $78 mark. Now, when you invest in the ETF, that essentially means that one share of SCHD means you own a lot of small, very small shares in these other companies. And that's why I just showed you the top 10 holdings. So one share of, of SCHD at $77, that $77 equates all of these holdings. There are 104 holdings together that HCHD has. So when you buy one share at $77 for SCHD, you own 4.5% of Broadcom, 4.42% of Verizon, and the list goes on. That's a great way to diversify. Now let's look at SCHD's dividends and dive in further. Now if I go to the dividend page for SCHD, Look at the scores here. It's going to show me grade B plus, C plus, A, B, A, A, A. Very good. Now, dividend summary, 3.2%. So for every share you own, you get 70 cents back. And then the thing about SCHD is that their payment periods are quarterly. So the other thing that ChatGPT gave us was VYM. Now, it just so happens that on SCHD's dividend page that we're looking at right now, it also has in the bottom right-hand corner, people also follow. And there happens to be VYM, Vanguard High Dividend Yield and also JEPI, VIG, and DGRO. ChatGPT did give us exactly what we asked them for. Here's the profile comparison for these funds. You have SCHD, VYM, JEPI, VIG, and DGRO. The fund name, the fund type, issuer, inception, expense rate, AUM. And as we go down, we can look at the ETF grades of each one, how they're trading, the dividends for each one. So you could see 3.2%, 2.93% for VYM. ChatGPT did not mention JEPI. I mainly recommend JEPI, JEPI, for those who are closer to retirement. Now that's because a fund like JEPI is designed for higher dividend yields, but less long-term growth. Whereas SCHD is gonna provide you with both. It has a lower dividend yield, at 3.28%. However, it's gonna be a better stock to have for long -term, for longer term growth. Let's just say I narrowed it down to two ETFs, SCHD and VYM. Then I asked ChatGPT to do that. Compare SCHD and VYM. And so here it goes. It's going to work and it's telling me the comparison between SCHD and VYM. The high yielding dividend stocks. Here's a comparison between the two. Both hold a diversified portfolio of high yielding dividend stocks, but SCHD has a slightly different approach. SCHD focuses on companies with a long history of steady and growing dividends. Meanwhile, VYM focuses on companies with high yields. Now let's see if ChatGPT can provide a better description of the difference between SCHD and JEPI. So I just asked ChatGPT to compare SCHD and JEPI. Let's see what it comes up with. SCHD and JP Morgan Equity ETF, JEPI, are both exchange traded funds that offer exposure to dividend paying stocks. Here's a comparison between the two. Both SCHD and JEPI hold a diversified portfolio of dividend paying stocks, but SCHD has a slightly different approach. SCHD focuses on companies with a long history of steady and growing dividends, while JEPI focuses on companies with attractive valuations and earnings growth potential. So sort of what I said earlier, 
whereas SCHD is designed for a longer term investment that's going to have more growth. And JEPI, J-E-P-I, is constructed to have a higher yielding dividend now, but over the long term, it's going to have less growth. So that's why a lot of times JEPI is recommended for people who want that income now. Specifically, if you're going to be retirement age and you want to live off of your dividends because you're less concerned with long-term growth and more concerned with yielding money now. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to explain something to me like I'm a five-year-old. Explain what a stock call is to me like I'm a five-year-old. <laughs> and look what it says. Okay, let's pretend you have a lemonade stand and you want to buy some lemons to make lemonade to sell. A call is like asking your mom or dad to buy you the lemons for you so you can make lemonade and sell it. In the same way, when you buy a call for a stock, you are asking someone to buy a stock for you so you can own a piece of a company and make money if the stock goes up in value. Just like with your lemonade stand, there are rules to follow and not all stocks can be bought this way. But with a call, you have a chance to own a piece of a company. Just like owning lemons for your lemonade stand. Let's ask it what a stock put is. Hey ChatGPT, explain what a stock put is to me like I'm five years old. A put is like having an umbrella when it's raining outside. Just like an umbrella protects you from getting wet, a put can protect you from losing money if the stock you own goes down in value. When you buy a put for a stock, you are basically saying, I want to be protected if the stock goes down. If the stock goes down, you can sell it for a higher price than it is worth and make up for some of the losses. It's like selling your lemons for a better price because it's raining and no one wants to buy lemonade. But just like with an umbrella, you have to pay for the protection. And there are rules to follow when buying a put. Okay, not bad. Not bad, ChatGPT. Now I feel better. Thanks for the explanation. Again, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Your support is very appreciated. And I'll see you next time. If you decide to